Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Bomber 3029-4-600 double acting spring hinge. The Bomber 3029 is representative of the fact that this is a double acting spring hinge. Okay. The dash 4 is representative of the fact that it is a uh, hinge that has a leaf height here which is the door portion, a four inch. But more importantly, that four inch dimension relates to the range of door thickness that this is compatible with. A four inch hinge is going to be for doors from seven eighths to inch and a quarter thick. If you have a thicker door than that, this hinge won't really work. If you have a thinner door, this hinge won't work either. So reach out to us if you have a door outside of that range. Um, the 600 means that it is in the prime coat finish. That's just a gray finish available in several different finishes on the website uh, by Bomber. The um, uh, capacity of this door is, as we said, 7 eighths to inch and a quarter thickness. Two hinges if you're dealing with a 60 pound door. Add a third hinge if you're dealing with a door up to 75 pounds. And two hinges. 28 inch width on the door, 3 hinges, uh, 36 inch width on the door, and this door sh height should not really exceed 6 foot 8. Um, the link to the template below here shows everything important about the hinge, So, I'm, and I'm not going to beleaguer all the points of it except to touch on the important aspect of what, and this is really the question that everybody is going ends up asking when they're considering these hinges. What is the size that you have to pre-fit the door for this hinge? In the uh, template, upper right-hand corner, you're going to see a chart. Okay, so your it says actual door width plus A dimension for a single door. You could also take your frame opening, and let's just use for the for the example the purpose of an example here that your frame opening is 36 inch. If you're not going to mortise this door flange, you're going to deduct 0.47 inch. It's basically 7 sixteenths of an inch, a little bit heavy on 7 sixteenths. If you're going to mortise it, then your door is going to be uh, 0.379 allowance for that. And that's about 3 eighths of an inch. So you could take your door width. And you could add those dimensions, and then that's the clear opening that you've got to have in your uh, in your uh, frame, your inside frame width. If you're, you could also radius the lock edge of the door, and that would uh, potentially give you, um, you know, a, a, an ability to have a tighter. It will give you an ability to have a tighter margin. But this, these dimensions are based on square edge doors. Obviously, you'd want a square edge door where you're going to mount it to the. Um, you know, mount the hinge to uh, the end of the door. Okay. Now, if you're doing a double door, it's the same sort of dimension or same sort of principle. Take your opening width, deduct your B dimension, whether it's mortised or surface mounted for your two hinges, and then divide that by two, what's left over, and that's the actual width of the doors. Or take the width of both of your doors, add them together, add your B dimension, 0 0.940 or 0.758, and that's your frame, uh, inside frame width that you need to accomplish. Very typical, very easy sort of material. Um, the setting of the tension on this is going to be covered in the installation instructions. Okay. Um, uh, the, the bottom line is this. Your tension collars should be pointed in the up direction towards the top of the door. You're going to get with all of this a tension rod. You're going to get tension pins. And I'll show you how those work in a moment. You're also going to get screws, all wood screws. You're going to come with this. Now, you can see from the instructions that if you're dealing with three hinges, put the two at the top because all of the work all of the weight of the door, all the work being done by the hinge is really what's being done at the top of the door. So you're going to put two there per the uh, dimensions indicated on the instructions, three inch from the top for your next for your first hinge, then two or three inches spacing between the top two hinges. And that bottom hinge, that third hinge, that's kind of just keeping the door in the frame. 
I'm a fan of all spring hinges. Um, if you're not sure if, or if you're on the borderline, opt to going with more than two spring hinges because uh, you know, you'll find that you've got, um, if you're stretching it, you'll find that your door is actually going to tip into the opening because the tension that you'll set on the spring is not great enough to really compensate to keep the door vertical. So that's a real important aspect to deal with. Um, setting of the tension. Obviously, there's no tension on these leaves at all. But <clears throat> when you've got your hinge installed there, you'll insert your tension rod into one of these holes and you'll rotate it uh, clockwise or in the direction of the arrow that you see there. And as you do that, you reveal new holes. And it's into those new holes that you'll insert the tension pin, that little silver pin. And that will keep the tension set. And you'll do that on both sides of the hinge. And that's really it. It's a very simple process. This is a tried and true sort of hinge that is extremely common. You'll see these on restaurant doors from the kitchen to like the, the uh, to the counter area, you know, the double acting doors. You'll see them there very often. Uh, beyond that, there's not a lot of things to say other than that this is a hinge available in multiple different sizes and as we've said, different finishes uh, as well. Last thing I'd like to point out is the Bomber logo that you see there. And right above the logo it says Made in USA. A fact that Bomber is quite proud of as am I to represent them. If you have any questions on the Bomber 3029-4-600 double acting spring hinge or any other Bomber product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.